What's up, Xavier Architects? Here I am at MakerBot.com, and I just went to Resources Software and scrolled down here to download MakerBot Print. That's the piece of software you're going to need on your machine to convert your .stl file, which you're going to convert your Rhino file into that first, and then something that you can print out on the MakerBot. So you need this piece of software. I have it on my machine, but you might want to install it on your machine. So that's the first step, is to get MakerBot Print working on your machine at home. They'll probably have you create a, uh, you know, like a, a username and a, a password to, to install it. It's free, but they're going to want to, you know, have you log in to use it and that sort of thing. And the cool thing is you can actually save your prints, I think, on their little, their little store and come back and, and get prints later on that you did. So there's some benefits to creating the account. First and foremost, that you can actually install the printer software, which you need. Okay, so let's say I've got that printer all set up, and now I'm in uh, Rhino, and I've got my, uh, my, my car, and I'm ready to go. I want to highlight all of my car's design. Okay, that's the first step. And what I want to do is I want to go to uh, the command line and type in underscore mesh. Enter. And we've got some options here. The density you can leave alone. Uh, maximum angle, uh, you know, you could probably leave that alone. Maximum edge length, let's change that to six. Minimum edge length, I went with zero, zero, point zero, 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 one. Um, maximum distance edge to surface, you could go, uh, zero, zero, one. And, uh, I think that's all that you're going to need to change. Um, we're going to refine the mesh and pack the textures, but these other two can be left unchecked. And let's see what we get in simple controls. Oh, this is like more polygons, fewer polygons. We can leave that right in the middle based on our, uh, you know, the mesh settings that we just entered and say, okay. And basically, uh, you know, Rhino converts your design into a bunch of triangles, you know, and it looks like this little extra, there's this little extra surface here, you know, I don't know how that showed up there, but we're just going to leave it there, let it be for the time being, okay, but we do want to export all of this for 3D printing, so I'm going to highlight all that and go to file, uh, export selected, and I'm going to scroll down, find where I want to put this, you know, wherever you want to put it in your file folder, or I can put it in my, uh, my drive account, in my uh, architectural design, CO2 car racers, and we're going to call this uh, a racer, Chia. And I don't want to save this as a 3D model. I want to save it as a .stl, stereolithography. And I'm going to click on that, and it's saying racerchia.stl, save. And it brings me back in here to make sure that I have all this set up right. And, of course, uh, I have to come back in here and... Um, I'll fix some of these. Maximum edge length. Six. And minimum initial grid quads is fine. I have that at 16. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. We'll see how that, that all comes together. And we'll say, I'm going to go refine mesh, pack texture, simple planes. Say, okay. We want this to be on binary. Say, okay. And now we've got the exported file on our, uh, in our Google Drive folder. I'll just go and check to make sure. Architectural design, and then CO2 racers. And there it is, racerchia.stl. Now, I want to go to MakerBot, that software, the MakerBot print software, and I'm going to open that up, 
and we're going to do new projects. And there might be a process of you having to set this up for Replicator 5th Gen. That's the one we have in the classroom. So we want to set it up as the printer is the Replicator 5th Generation. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go File, uh, Insert File. Or I'm sorry, Insert STLs as Assembly. And there's Racer Chia. And there's my car. And you'll notice that there's some things that show up here. I want to make sure that my base layer is a raft. Uh, I want to make sure that my infill density is low. 10% is fine. Uh, support density should also be fairly low. Breakaway supports, yes. That's just to allow like the, pr the print job to print so it's not just printing in empty space. And then for my uh, my orientation, uh, you'll see that it was up, it's upside down here. So I'm just going to flip it on the x-axis twice until it gets flat on the build plate. You can see it's bigger than the build plate, so I need to orient that so it's no longer bigger. So I'm going to rotate this at 45 degrees on the z-axis, and then I'm just going to drag it and take a look here. Maybe I'll go in the opposite direction, negative 5. There we go, that's looking pretty good. And maybe another negative three. Maybe two. Aha, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so it's all set. I don't know what the hell this little floating plane is here, but it doesn't look like it's going to be very much, so probably not going to affect my print job very much at all, if at all. So I'm ready to go. So I go over here to export. And I find my, uh, you know, my thumb drives, which I have not plugged in yet, but I will plug it in. Plug in my thumb drive, and we want to save it to that thumb drive, okay? We're just going to save it and give it a file name, Racer, you know, Chia, and then save it. I've already got one on the printer going right now. So once you have that, now you're over to the printer with the thumb drive, and I'll show you the rest of that in just a second okay so we're coming over to the MakerBot and we're gonna put our thumb drive in and uh, set it up there and we're gonna go over to our uh, our little interface here and you'll notice that it says uh, print and if it's on something else you can always just move the wheel to get it where you want it you're gonna hit you're gonna press that and then USB storage, boom, you're going to click on that. And once it loads the uh, print jobs from the USB, you're going to scroll and toggle through those print jobs until you get to the print job that you want. And then you're going to hit this knob to print that job. Uh, the USB that works is currently in use on this machine. So we'll use that one that we know works. Uh, this one I wasn't able to save files to. but Anyway, it'll show up on the list there. You'll scroll through the list to find what you want and then hit the button to choose. And then it'll ask you if you want to print and you'll just pop it again and off it goes. Okay, so that's pretty much the process for printing on the MakerBot.